Hello, and thank you for your interest in our plasma sensor. My name is Dr. Christopher Rusher, and I'll be giving this presentation on behalf of Spectral Energies and the principal investigator, Dr. Sivram Goganini. The work I'm about to present was funded by the Navy via a Phase II Sibir Reachback. Before I talk about our plasma sensor, I would like to give an introduction to Spectral Energies. We're a small business that was founded in 2006 and is located in Dayton, Ohio. We have about 35 employees with a diverse range of expertise, and we partner with many academic institutions to help further expand the breadth of our capabilities. In the center of this slide, we show some of the technologies we are working on at Spectral Energies. Around the technologies are the different organizations that we work with. Let's talk about our plasma sensor. The reason we are developing the plasma-based sensor is because there currently is a lack of robust high-speed sensors that can survive long exposure to the austere hypersonic condition without requiring expensive cooling or other mitigation strategies. This leads to constant replacement of sensors, which is expensive and time-consuming. Further, this can lead to ground test facilities using a minimal amount of sensors and obtaining reduced fidelity data. This lack of fidelity can add significant risk to future hypersonic systems and flight tests. To help solve this issue, Spectral Energies and its partners at the University of Notre Dame, through a Navy-funded Phase II SBR reachback, have been developing its plasma-based sensor to measure pressure, velocity, temperature, and species concentration in the austere hypersonic environment. Recently, the pressure version of the probe was integrated into a hypersonic rocket and successfully collected pressure data during flight. Our high-speed plasma-based probe provides significant improvement over existing technology. For example, our sensor's high sampling speeds allows one to adequately understand the hypersonic environment. Further, our sensor can survive long duration exposure to hypersonic conditions without degradation. This makes our sensor an attractive option to organizations developing hypersonic technologies, such as the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, and weapon system contractors. In addition to hypersonics, our probe has application in other austere environments, such as gas turbine engines, rotate and detonation engines, and semiconductor manufacturing. Our probe works by generating a small amount of plasma that is used as the sensing element. This, unlike mechanical means such as thin wires and membranes, is not damaged by exposure to high temperature or pressure, thus allowing our sensor to survive long duration exposure to hypersonic conditions. Our probe has been demonstrated in multiple high temperature and high pressure applications, such as the combustor, compressor, and turbine of a military gas turbine engine, a rotating detonation engine, a hypersonic wind tunnel, and most recently, a hypersonic sounding rocket. In order to bring the probe to its current level, we perform significant research and development under this phase two SBIR. For one, we developed a robust turnkey control system. This was required because previous iterations of the plasma sensor required careful human input to ensure the plasma ignited and stayed ignited during the test. This is sufficient for specialized laboratories, but is not suitable for typical use in wind tunnels or flight applications. As such, we developed a control system that automatically generates the plasma. Once generated, the control system is capable of monitoring the plasma and maintaining it for the test duration. If the plasma is extinguished for some reason during the test, the controller can reinitialize the plasma. In addition, we explored the effect of various materials that could be used to make the sensor. As I stated, the sensing element is the small plasma that is generated by two electrodes. As such, the only part of the probe that must physically interact with the environment is the electrodes. We can therefore make the electrodes out of high temperature alloys like Inconel and Haynes material. The final part of the project was the integration of the sensor into a sounding rocket. This was a significant engineering undertaking 
as we had less than six months to take a laboratory sensor system and design it to withstand the harsh flight conditions. Working with the sounding rocket team, Spectral Energies and its partners were able to successfully integrate the sounding rocket and the probe and were able to collect pressure data for the duration of the flight. As was stated, the sensor has been tested in multiple laboratory facilities like hypersonic wind tunnels, arc jets, and jet engine test rigs, and the sounding rocket flight test. The current version of the sensor and its electronics were integrated into the sounding rocket during the summer of 2022. Environmental testing was performed, showing the sensor and the electronics could survive the flight conditions. The rocket was launched in October 2022, and our probe successfully collected the pressure and transmitted data back to the ground. The key features of the probe that we have highlighted throughout this talk include the following. The probe can withstand high temperature and high pressure, and it has been demonstrated in relevant environments that experience these conditions. Further, our probe does not need expensive and complex cooling to survive these conditions, unlike other sensors. The probe has also survived in dirty, sooty environments and showed no sign of degradation in sensing performance. The probe can sample at megahertz speed, which is a requirement to capture the relevant physics of the hypersonic environment. Another key feature of the probe is its relatively simplistic form and low cost. The probe, for example, costs around 5K. Finally, the probe will enable improved data collection during ground and flight tests. This will enable improved resolution and fidelity and will provide engineers with data that can be used to better understand the hypersonic environment. Ultimately, this will lead to reduced risk and uncertainty in hypersonic flight vehicles. Further, the sensor could be incorporated into a flight system and provide additional instrumentation to help improve control system performance and health monitoring. Beyond the phase two work, SE will work with the Navy and other partners to improve the TRL and make the sensor ready for additional flight tests and ground tests. We are currently working with the Navy to provide appropriate documentation to show the sensor system is TRL-5. SE is also working to redesign its electronics for improved swap, especially for flight testing. Because of the short time frame for flight integration, the probe that flew on the sounding rocket used the prototype laboratory circuit board that was not optimized for swap or flight. We are also improving the control algorithm to handle larger ranges and pressure that were experienced during the flight test. We are also working to formally calibrate the probe over a wide range of operating conditions. We are also working to characterize the sensors, EMI, and depending on the results, we will improve mitigation strategies. Ultimately, the probe will be applicable to Navy application, especially in hypersonic and gas turbine engines. The product we are developing is the plasma-based probe, and potential customers include members of the hypersonic market, like testing facilities, missile and rockets, and hypersonic engines. We believe there are also customers in the gas turbine industry, as well as customers in the semiconductor industry, who the team is working with already. To summarize, we are Spectral Energies, and we have been developing a robust plasma-based pressure, velocity, temperature, and species concentration probe for hypersonic application under a Navy Phase II SBIR. The probe can be used to reduce uncertainty in flight operation and help push the operational envelope. Continued development of the probe will require continued funding to reduce the swap C, perform a formal calibration, and improve the closed loop control for larger ranges of pressure. We also request continued technology maturation support to ensure the proper documentation is being generated as we increase the TRL. Lastly, we will need system requirements from anyone who would like to use the sensor. 
Thank you for your time and for listening to us talk about our plasma probe. We would be very happy to take any questions and our contact information is listed here on this slide. Thank you.